Hello, my name is Ryan Williams and I'm a PhD student at Teesside University. I have created a blog called IIT Education to talk about some of the things I'm learning through this journey. The last few months have brought unprecedented changes for society as a whole, but in particular within the UK school system. Many students were forced to learn from home for much of the lockdown period. However, being taught remotely either through blended learning or otherwise, will become the new normal. This is a short video reflecting upon virtual learning environments. E-learning systems, often called virtual learning environments, are designed for supporting and improving the individual study process. The VLEs have been part of the university's architecture for the past 15 years and now play a vital role in around 95% of UK universities and therefore they have become an integral part of the teaching and learning process. VLEs also present an opportunity for universities to leverage their brand across geographical borders. A VLE is a web-based learning platform that allows students, without the barriers of time and place, to access a wide range of different learning tools and course content. Although depending on the supplier, there may be a variety in the communication functionality such as web chat, video chat, forums and discussion boards. Much of the social science literature focuses on the administrative uses of virtual learning environments rather than the pedagogical uses by the teacher or educator. Despite this, there have been many successful implementations of VLEs throughout the West and the student acceptance is often the cause. Researchers such as Salim and on Kellermans and Martins have argued that student acceptance is indeed a significant predictor into the success of that system. It can be argued that students prefer virtual learning environments that contain readily available support. They perceive it as useful, such as downloading study material, and adopt a social context such as chat or discussion boards. Further research suggests that personality traits also play an important role in the technology adoption process, in particular with consideration to computer anxiety. Functions to access learning materials are viewed as useful and essential by students. However, some of the literature also suggests that the provision of learning materials can lead to an increasingly passive teacher. Although a passive teacher approach may be viewed negatively among educators, students are more likely to believe that the virtual learning environment will help them in their studies when they perceive it as useful. Furthermore, a popular feature associated with VLEs is the fulfilment of students' communication needs, such as instant communication with peers and teachers in a variety of formats. Some researchers argue that learners have different needs and characteristics, such as prior knowledge, cognitive traits, and the infamous term learning styles. Therefore, it is important that educational institutes personalise their learning processes according to their main characteristics of their students. Built on constructivism, personalised learning has become popular in educational research in recent years. According to some of the education theorists, virtual learning environments have four main areas that they can contribute to a personalised learning experience. Communication tools, such as emails, messaging and discussion boards. Individual working spaces, so um, learning resources being accessible outside of lesson time. A library is a good example of that. Management tools, this is important to track individual progress and security from a, a device or internet perspective. Several studies across Europe have gone even further and allowed personalised creation of e-lessons to match students' learning styles, such as auditory, visual, tactile and kinesthetic. These personalised pedagogical agents are welcomed by educational practitioners. One of the main challenges in virtual learning environments is assessment and this is because it differs so much to measuring attainment in the classroom. In virtual learning environments, for example, 
they use quizzes and tests to measure educational outcomes. However, formative evaluations that contain, that contain data about the quality of interactions and communications among peers and levels of participation are harder to measure. Teachers would usually do this through a traditional face-to-face -face encounter. Although this does require um, a level of uh, competence from the evaluator. For example, an NQT may measure the quality of group work differently to an experienced practitioner. Despite this, virtual learning environments rarely present an overall picture for the, for the evaluator and they often use quantitative evaluations. Some researchers argue that quantitative evaluations are unreliable and they're not always significant in education. This conundrum offers scope for new opportunities and challenges that should be investigated within virtual learning environments. Thank you for watching. In my next video, I'm going to discuss education technology in an international context. Thank you.